I had to wear the Furbies just for this video. Just for this video, Taylor, I had to rock the Furbies for you, my love. The person that I was presenting wasn't really me. It's not like I was aware of it, so it's not like I was ever purposely like not acting like myself, but I do think I really, really, really lost myself when I was dealing with the life altering uh, relationship I was in that, you know, it just changed my whole reality. And I saw how far they were willing to go because they hated me. And to see how far they were willing to go to try to destroy the things that were happening for me, I, I figured how bad of a person must I be. After everything that Taylor has been through, like, I can't believe that she would come back on this platform. And I was truly, truly, truly shocked. Hey Jelly Beans, welcome back to my channel. If it's your first time here and you didn't know already, my name is Tara. And thank you so much being here. And if you like commentary, deep dive, scams, beauty, lifestyle, whatever I feel like filming. And if you like my vibe, don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell down below so you don't miss out on any of my new uploads. All right, my Jelly Beans. We have a video today, something a little bit different for me. Um, normally, I'm here with kind of, I wouldn't say negative content, but you know, content where either I'm trying to hold people accountable or I'm talking about things that can be very deep, sometimes pretty tedious. It, it really kind of, again, depends on what my mood is, but I hope all of you guys are having a good day. Of course, my brain is gonna be everywhere per use. But today, again, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I noticed when I came out of work, that Taylor Nicole Dean uploaded about a week ago on her YouTube channel and I threw some brows on, threw my little Furby shirt on, and threw some Furby earrings on and <laughs> decided to sit down and film because I really wanted to talk about it. If you don't know who Taylor Nicole Dean is, I will give you a brief rundown of who she is. She is a pet tuber here on this platform. She likes to basically show all of her different pets, her reptiles, how she cares for them all that jazz and she blew up very 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 quickly on youtube and i've always really loved her personality um she also has been very honest about being an addict who has struggled in and out of active addiction and that's basically why she hasn't uploaded for the past over a year. This is her like return video, which she actually named how to ruin your life 101. I left youtube for over a year. First of all, I want to say she looked so freaking stunning in this video. And I have to say, it's kind of like a breath of fresh air for me to see such a large YouTuber. She has 1.96 million subscribers, you guys. And she's so honest about her addiction, her struggle with being in recovery, in and out of recovery, in and out of active addiction. She's been very honest about her past relationship uh, where she was with a famous band leader or something i don't to be honest i don't really know but <laughs> too much about that i just know that it was a very rough relationship for her a lot of people started calling her out a while ago saying that she wasn't taking care of her animals they were calling her out for her um drug use she ended up going and getting clean and then she came back to the platform for about 10 months and then she left again she kind of just ghosted everybody even though she's been semi-active on twitter and her other social medias like instagram she really hasn't divulged much about what's been going on and this was like her I'm back guys and she went really deep in this video it is a 45 minute video let me know if you guys have seen this let me know if you guys know who Taylor is I've always respected how honest and open she is about her addiction and her recovery process and how she includes that and incorporates that into her content on her pet channel she does say in this video her return video that she never set out to be a pet tuber or like show people how to care for pets because she was just wanting to share her love for animals and to really just make people smile. I think people started to think that, I don't know, especially with this whole, the whole pet tube era thing that started, that everyone started calling, you know, all these people that have animals are in this pet tube area. I never wanted to be in that. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but I didn't come onto YouTube to spread my knowledge of animals and to try to help you guys take care of your animals better. That's not why I came on here. I came on here to connect with people through my love of animals and thought that I could document the fun days and the adventures and things that happen when you care for animals. I've always said that like growing up I was enamored by like Steve Irwin and that I loved what he did. I wanted to take bits and pieces of what he did and respectfully, you know, 
use that in my work by not just doing fun videos but making sure I do throw in things that let you know more about the animals. I remember when I first started all of this it was more so just with photos on Twitter and I hated that when I posted cute pictures of my hedgehog that people would just say oh I'm gonna go buy one. It made me worried because it's not just a cute picture, it's an animal that you have to take care of. So I tried to find that balance in my videos, but then people started expecting me to do these care videos, and at first I was open to doing them, but I really don't like that I I don't want to do those anymore. I never I never wanted my style to be sitting down and telling you guys how to take care of something because I feel like there are multiple different ways to do it. I feel like I am just learning as I go right now and that I'm in no place to like tell you guys this is how it is and that what if what if there's new knowledge that comes out that I wasn't aware of that shows that this is better and that I just didn't like it. I, I always got insecure and uncomfortable with it so I tried to just do the most bare minimum stuff when I did how-to videos. I just said the basic knowledge that it's pretty much accepted by everyone. There were things that I would show how I feed my animals and people say, oh, I don't feed them this, I feed them this or whatever. And there were disagreements. I wanted to connect with people when I made this. The point of life to me, since I have ever been able to even reflect on what that could mean for me, has been to connect with people. I always just remember thinking like, I don't wanna die without doing something to like, impact other people positively. I'm not some monumental life-changing just anything like that but I just want to I just want to make people smile that's it like I wanted I wanted to connect to other people on here my days were bad this helped me and I hoped that other people who's, who had similar bad days could also enjoy my videos and I happen to really love animals so I thought I would document my journey into caring for animals and I never thought it would get this big ever but I feel like along the way a lot of people misconstrued what my plan or intentions were with this channel. She does have a condition, a medical condition, and she also was very isolated as a child. I believe she was homeschooled. You guys can connect, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong about that, but I believe that she was homeschooled as well. So she lived a very isolating, isolated life. So YouTube, social media, the internet was kind of a escape for her from like her reality, if that makes sense. So she also, in this video, brings up some very disturbing stuff. She goes into a little bit about her toxic relationship. I'll, of course, link the video down below. And she also talks about her apartment she moved into um, where when she left her parents' house and basically talked about how people were constantly calling animal control on her. They were constantly figuring out just from photos of like a... Uh, picture where what hotel she was in or when she went to sober living she took a picture of um, herself and there was a pool table in the back and people literally went and figured out what sober living house she was at and then she got kicked out because of this because you know you have to be you have to keep the people in sober living anonymous because it's part of the program and people were calling there. I never said I was living in Austin and I never said any part of Austin that I lived in, nothing like that. But I posted a picture and if I still have it, I'm gonna put it right there. Basically, it was just a picture of me in front of a mirror and you could see a pool table behind me. Because of that, people started looking online about sober livings, I guess, in the San Antonio and outer San Antonio area. And so I guess they went digging through all those found one in Austin that had a pool table in their living room when they showed the layout of the house on the website and they found which sober living I was at and they called and they harassed them so much because the anonymity of you know all the other people living there and that they needed their privacy and they couldn't have people showing up to the house you know because of me. In the meantime of looking for a sober living I went to a hotel and people found which hotel I was at because of the bed frame and the f pictures on the wall. Like, they found what hotel I was at and started posting the address online. People just figured out all this stuff. She ended up getting kicked out of her, not evicted, but they basically said you need to go from her first apartment because people were calling so much and new management took over. My apartment's front desk and all of the management got taken over by a new company. And the new company really hated the calls. Really hated the calls. Within two weeks of the company being switched they emailed me and they said we need to talk and they brought me downstairs and they said look we're getting a lot of emails from people and calls that just fill up our phone line about your animals being in bad condition and that we need to kick you out and blah 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 we're not going to evict you because you know we they sent someone to do a walk through my house in my apartment and see that there weren't any animals in bad conditions and that there was no like 
damage to the apartment because of my animals or anything like the calls were saying and because of that they said we're not going to evict you or kick you out or anything but we don't want to deal with this so you need to find another place to live as quickly as possible. So then the next apartment she went into, which I guess was like a dream apartment that she always wanted to be like live in. And she had this cute story about her cousin and her um, always saying they were going to live in one of these apartments one day or houses or whatever. And finally she said she could make it happen, even though that was like at the worst of her addiction. So I got up and I started looking for a home and I stumbled upon a house inside the neighborhood that I have wanted to live in since I was like four years old. As, as early as I could walk and talk, me and my cousin went on a parade of homes tour inside this neighborhood and me and him, my cousin, told each other that we were gonna raise enough money when we were adults to share uh, one of these houses. We were gonna live in one together. Growing up that was always our dream was to live in this really cool neighborhood. Once I was old enough to understand the concept of money and things like that, I knew it was unrealistic and it was probably never ever ever gonna happen unless I got like a bunch of people together who were all making a lot of money and we all split it and it just it logically wasn't gonna happen but it did and not to mention I was in the worst state of my life and I was moving into my dream home and so I try to use that as motivation to be like if I was doing that bad and I moved into there let's see what I can accomplish when I'm healthy but it's still a bummer what happened she was with that boyfriend that I was talking about previously and her boyfriend I guess posted a picture of the gate and people found out where she was and they started calling the security and all that jazz on her. Upon moving in, I signed a thing that said like which animals were allowed and which weren't. And there was a list of farm animals that weren't allowed. I didn't have farm animals. So, you know, I signed the thing, said I'm not going to bring chickens in there or whatever the whole list of animals were that they didn't allow. And I moved in. <laughs> I guess my ex posted on his Instagram story the front gate of the neighborhood while we were on tours. And so when I moved in, people looked up that neighborhood from the front gate and then went and found which house was mine inside the neighborhood. And they started doing the calls again. The animal control and the harassment to the homeowner society this time. And this neighborhood was so prestigious. They have really well-known people living in this neighborhood who really want their privacy and all this. They did not like that they were getting these calls. So I got an email um, in April that said I had a month to leave that I'm gonna get out of the lease, like that I'm not gonna have to deal with all that stuff, that they're gonna just get me out of it all, but that I have to leave. As a community, they don't wanna be dealing with this stuff and that there's people calling saying that they live in the neighborhood seeing me have my animals out on the street and I can't do that kind of stuff, which never happened. It was someone online pretending. It didn't matter. They told me that they wanted me out. Like to, it's so cringe to me. Like I understand when it comes to animals, people are, you know, like, I've seen people say some really cruel things about Taylor on the internet when it comes to her pets. And she even says that people like CP, not CPS, basically CPS, but for animals, animal control uh, had told her that there was like the same three numbers in rotation constantly calling the animal control on her. They said even though it was anonymous and they couldn't really send information to me about who was calling, that they knew it was about the same three people calling every time and that they were pretty much, I think they were all three out of state. The first story was that I had a really dangerous monitor that was going to eat people's kids and that I let it run around unchecked and unsupervised. Another call was that all my animals are dying and I keep them in terrible conditions. I don't feed them. That there's dead animals in my house. That blah blah blah. Every single time animal control came there was no issue. So animal control would take pictures of everything so if they get another call they could reference the pictures say okay everything's fine and if it had been four to six months they had to show up again. The front desk put up with all of it even though they've been by, by the way this has not stopped to this day they still show up they've never taken an animal from me never been a fine nothing they still say it's the same three numbers most of the time there have been a few other ones but mainly the same three numbers so so whoever you are that's doing that you are really 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 wasting my city's resources for animals and they could be out doing other things but i know that's not gonna change your mind which is just so insane because if animal control is constantly going out there and they deem nothing wrong like why would you continue to call like again I understand when it comes to animals because trust me I'm one of those people too like I care a lot about animals but like I would never think to call animal control on a, a big youtuber just because I don't agree with how they feed them or something of that nature. She got a lot of harassment from people in regards to her animals and it really did affect her being able to 
even live somewhere because people would constantly make calls. She always felt like she didn't know who she was and she was putting on this front and she was letting everybody's criticism of her like go to heart. I swear I just didn't love myself and I saw how far they were willing to go because they hated me. It hurt. Every time these people online said these things, it already was affecting me a lot because I was at that place where I just didn't love myself. And to see how far they were willing to go to try to destroy the things that were happening for me, I, I figured how bad of a person must I be. Um, use the thought that, you know, every person that's bad doesn't think they're bad. I mean, maybe some do, but normally the worst people are gonna say they're a good person and they're not gonna know they're bad. So I started to believe like, oh my god, what if even though I think I'm a nice person, doesn't everyone think that? Like, maybe I am terrible. And maybe I just don't know. Although a lot of the things that people would assume about my animals were untrue, I figured it all stemmed from something true. Having a huge platform, you're gonna have people, in general, <laughs> in life, really, you're gonna have people that love you and hate you, right? And when it's to a degree of millions of people, I couldn't even imagine people constantly calling my where I live trying to ruin my security. You know, like your home is supposed to be your safe place, right? So I couldn't imagine constantly getting phone calls from random people that don't know me in real life. Plus I'm dealing with my addiction. Then I have my animals and people are constantly calling animal control and all that jazz. Taylor also talks about how she decided to take this break and she had tried to film multiple times and come back to YouTube multiple times, but she never felt like it was right. She never felt like it was genuine enough. I can understand that uh, as a creator, just being like, wanting to film, but like, looking at the content and being like, I'm not being me, I'm not being genuine, my heart's not in it. Like, I can never understand how creators can just put up content to put up content, because I'm that type of person where if I don't have the, um, not motivation, but like the passion, and my heart isn't into what I'm speaking about and the content that I'm creating, I have a hard time so and I feel like it shows on camera so I really I, I, I don't know if I'm envious of the people that can do that but I could really relate to her when she was saying that she just didn't feel like her authentic true self when she had tried to film all those other times in the last year I do feel like again she looks beautiful I feel like she's radiating she also touched on her recovery and addiction really quickly and said that she always wanted to be open and honest about her addiction but she also didn't want to film content and be like hey guys yeah I'm using but I'm here and I respect that so much because so many creators especially with larger platforms they would just keep going with emotions right they would just keep wanting to make content because that is their sole form of income, right? And it's easy, especially with a large platform, to continue to make content and continue to have an income coming in. I mean, I'm sure she still has income from her other videos that she already has on her, her channel, but the point is, is that she could have been making content the entire time and not had her heart into it. So I respect her for that. Let me know, guys. You guys, if you are a fan of Taylor Nicole Dean, when did you find Taylor? Because I found her when she was like under 100,000 subscribers and she, again, blew up so fast. And then she did, um, she came out about her addiction. I mean, people were calling her out. I remember her starting to include and incorporate some um, recovery stuff into her channel, which I thought was super cool. Then she relapsed. She talks about her relapses as well in this video. I totally recommend watching this video, even if you're not like into pet tube. And I mean, a lot of you guys um, in my community, in our community, fellow jelly beans, you know what addiction is like. You've either struggled with it or you know someone very close to you who has struggled with it. I highly recommend this video by Taylor. I think it's so well done. I really just wanted to talk about this because I'm just so proud of her. And again, I feel like sometimes as commentary creators, we're so quick to make videos on like the negative things that are happening on the platform but we don't highlight the good things that are happening on this platform i'm just so proud of her and i i again i applaud her for being so open and honest about her recovery she also did a vice documentary talking about how she basically was an addict in front of one million people like how she turned into an addict in front of one million people which was her subscriber count that vice documentary is so good i'll also link that down below also taylor in this video goes on to say that she still will talk about her 
addiction story, recovery story, and be open and honest about it. And she also states that she will continue to show her pets. I know that there are people that think that these animals should all be wild, even though these aren't wild. These are domestic animals. There shouldn't be domesticated ones, basically. I know there's a lot of people like that that would fully just despise my channel. I don't want to change their opinion. I'm okay with them thinking that. They don't need to own snakes. That That's fine. I, I honestly think I'd probably agree with them on a lot of things, but that I do understand there is stuff to gain from caring up close and personal with these animals and having them in your home that there is ways to make it good but i totally understand their side the sad thing is is that her pets are probably like something that she wholeheartedly loves something that keeps her going and to think that so many people just again i understand that people are very uh, touchy when it comes to pets but um there's a way to go about it, and just being cruel is just not the way to go about it, in my opinion. The other thing I really admire about Taylor through this whole video is that she's explaining all of this horrendous stuff that has been happening, like, the last few years up until this point, and not once does she, in my opinion, come across as, like, you know those YouTubers that take big long breaks or like they get into a scandal and then they're like I was in a really dark place and they like get really emotional but it's like phony baloney you know what I mean Jelly Bean you know what I mean uh she comes off very genuine and she never comes off like feel sorry for me this happened or I feel sorry for myself because this happened I keep saying it I'm so proud of her and I highly again can encourage you guys to go check out her video. It's so good. Also check out her Vice documentary that she did, which is so amazing. I just, again, I just wanted to highlight something really positive in the community because I feel like, again, so many times we focus on the negative things on this platform. And to me, this is just like a really positive. And I really hope that Taylor can continue to work on herself, continue to educate people um, especially with her platform. She has such a huge platform in regards to talking about addiction and recovery and educating people and breaking stigmas. She talked about how she really isolated herself in the last year and a half and when she last relapsed, she thought, okay, well, I'm just gonna like hang out with friends to like get over this hump and hurdle and then the big C happened and she was basically at home by herself. So, I mean, she's definitely gone through a lot of things to get to where she is now, but sometimes that's how it is. She also talks about the last time she relapsed, how she was kind of in this phase of she wanted to get clean, but she didn't want to get clean. And then she realized that there was her head and then there was her soul. And that's when the real her started to come out. And I knew exactly how she felt. And she was talking about when she was in that state of mind, how depressed she was to the point where she had to force herself even to go to the bathroom. I, again, could relate to that because when I hit my rock bottom, that finally made me want to go get help and go to my year-long program. Mind you, I did relapse a few times after I got out of my year-long program, but when I got to that point where I just knew that I was done, it was my soul that came out and spoke to me and made me realize that I didn't want to live this life. I depressed. I was ready to trigger warning, trigger warning, moving forward, skip a minute ahead, but I was ready to not be here anymore. It, it really does take a, a toll on you when you're living that lifestyle, especially when you relapse after you've had a good amount of sobriety under your belt. So again, I'm just, I know I keep saying it, you guys are probably annoyed of me saying it, but I'm so proud of her. I definitely encourage, if you guys have no idea who she is, go check out this video. Leave her some love in the comments. I think all the positive support that we can send her right now will be amazing. I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people don't agree with her owning animals, having animals. They think she's an animal hoarder and things of that nature. And she kind of explained that she is not a pro. She never said she was a pro. Again, it's just learning as she goes. And I can respect that. I do think, again, people get very touchy when it comes to animals. I get that animals are a touchy subject on the internet because there are different ways to properly take care of them, but a lot of people get just very fearful about animals that aren't in their control. So they see an animal that is getting different care than what they would give 
and instead of being open to the idea that it's still healthy they just go right to that it's not and they freak out sometimes it really is done with good intentions and normally i feel like i can tell when it is and i'll be receptive to it i'll reply like you know don't worry that this is okay thank you for the tips i'll look into it if i ever see any issues with you know my animals i am totally fine with well sharing their ideas that are different than mine for care. It's just when it gets to the point of the line between, oh, maybe that care routine isn't what I would do versus your abuse all your animals it was it wasn't the same it's not the same thing and what I'm getting to is that with all of these insults and all of this this negative attention that I was feeding into I really started to lose myself and I do agree with her when she said that those same few people that keep calling animal control on her are wasting resources that could be used on something else more dire because if animal control is going out there and constantly getting calls she said they can only go out there once every four months so if people are repeatedly calling say every week or what have you and on top of that calling her place of residence her sobriety house like her sober living house where she wasn't didn't even have animals people tracked down and we're calling like that is mind-blowing to me mind-blowing we should not be doing that like why would we be doing that i don't know but <laughs> i'm gonna end this video i just really wanted to highlight this on my channel because i think it's so amazing i'm so proud of you taylor if you ever watch this i doubt you will but i'm so proud of you keep doing what you're doing don't be ashamed of who you are from an at fellow addict to another addict i love you you got this you got this. That mullet looks amazing. Your hair looks amazing. You look beautiful. You are glowing. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up or give it a thumbs down. It's all gravy, baby. At the end of the day, it's all engagement. And don't forget, if you like my vibe, don't forget to subscribe. And I really hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.